All right, so patterning ideas for small spaces. Now she's e-collar trained. She doesn't notice I turn right here, so I do an e-collar tap. And, oh my goodness, still don't have her attention. <laughs> I check the fit. And notice that, see how excited she is? So I just pause and go slow. I actually even waited till she looked away to pursue. Every moment forward in the process that you take of anything, if your dog is excited, that's what you're rewarding. It, whatever, whatever emotional state your dog is in. So that's why I kept that in there. It was just like a little settle down before I reached down and actually grabbed her collar to check it. It's that little check. They make all the difference. Okay, so hopefully I've got a better fit now. And see how she's like doing her fast, slow walk where she's excited, but she is walking slowly. So this is just a, a warm up basically is what I'm doing. And utilize your environment, whether you need to pull out your coffee table or push it in, whatever you need to do. Uh, that way you can squeeze in some tight spaces. Uh, dogs tend to push forward in tight spaces. Of course she didn't, she was perfect, but we did find her weakness. And this is one of them right here. So this may not seem like much, but what I'm doing is move when I move, stop when I stop. So she's staring at place, waiting for me to say P-L-A-C-E. And look, she's even like, if I sit, maybe you'll give me the next thing to do. Like she's offering, you know, those, those things. Now I tapped for that because she's no longer with me. She's sniffing, pushing ahead, leaning out. She thinks I want her to lay down, but I don't. So I let her sniff right where she's at. That is not a big deal. I don't want her to sniff with the lean out. Now she's looking at me and I look away. So just to be clear, it's not that she can't sniff. She just can't take a step away or lean way out and let her nose, you know, take her someplace else <laughs> away from me. That she does not have to sit. She does not have to lay down. She just has to stand next to me. She's trying to problem solve. Look at her staring at me. She's like, what, what do you, like, can you tell me what to do? No, no, I can't. I'm just going to tell you what not to do and you're going to figure out what I want. So it's bare bones, holistic foundation training. Move when I move, stop when I stop. So I want her, what, the reason I did the thumbs up, even though she's looking out the window, is because I will not even move forward until she's not looking at me. If I want to reward drive, if I want to reward focus and keep that brain in motion, even though she's laying down, when she looks at me, we'll keep going. That's not what I want to reward right now. That's not the purpose of this part of the exercise. I want her to relax. I want her to learn how to be bored and just relax. So I actually don't look at her unless I'm gonna say no. I actually don't look at her. You can't see my face, but I'm not looking at her. And I wanna make sure she doesn't get to sniff um, where she's stretching out and away. She has to be bored. She has to just hang out and I will wait for that to happen. Now, because her sniffing was getting a little excessive, I did start to be more on top of her for that. But just so you guys know, sometimes when dogs um, just sniff right underneath them, we, we let it go. It's not a big deal. But she was <laughs> pressing her nose into the carpet and making noise. It's like she's got to take everything to another level. It's like you can't just sniff. So anyway, I want ears back, not looking, not focusing on anything in particular, just maybe glancing around, being bored. And then we can move on to the next step. So move when I move, stop when I stop. And I love walking up to place because she's anticipating I'm going to say it. So the more I do what she doesn't expect, the more it mentally drains her and also keeps her following me more. So, and this dog is hard to mess up because she loves her obedience. So she's um, always, you know, excited to be like, what's next? What's next? And I'm trying to work against that and be very subtle and ask for very little. Switching it up, moving into her. I'm doing it until she gets out of my way. You know, without that side eye of surprise, she just calmly gets out of my way. So that's why I did a couple circles. It's very loose leash. She can even switch sides. She doesn't have to be in any specific position for this exercise. But obviously, the more you work your dog down to be more and more calm, they'll be right next to you. 
Now, you know how I said I don't want to uh, move forward? I don't want to move to the next command when she's staring at me because I reward the drivey, distract, like, not distracted. I reward the part of the brain where I'm pulling focus, I'm redirecting, and I don't want to redirect. I want her to feel all the feels, okay? That's the same for place. If she thinks I'm going to say place and she's staring at the dog bed, I'm never going to say it. See? Okay, I waited till she looked away before I said it. So here's the repeat is she looked away and then I said place. So basically you do move when I move, stop when I stop till the dog is doing wonderful. Pauses aren't stressful. They're not sniffing everywhere and stretching out and taking a step and hyper-focusing out the window. They're just being able to be bored next to you. Then mixing in some other stuff. I'm finally saying place now that she's not crazy about place or expecting me to say place. Do some recalls. Come down, come down. Right? P- piece of cake, piece of cake. Do some squatting down. I had her place on the chair. I thought it would be good because it wobbles. <laughs> of course, she didn't care because she's awesome. She was a little bit like, what is happening? <laughs> but I'm just mixing it up. This is resiliency training, by the way. Um, physical resiliency training. You ever want to take your dog on a plane? You better be doing stuff like that. Then I recalled her to a let's go command. Okay. All, all of that I'm able to do in this small space, which I was really happy with, with how great she did. And I'm moving quickly. See, it's my fast pace. I'm using speed to get her attention. See, I even backed up. See how much more engaging that is? Got her even a little excited. This is all for distraction, by the way, because she was going nice and slow. Then I'm gonna amp her up, have some fun. We're gonna move quick. I'm gonna use speed to get her attention, some pets, and then we're gonna, and I'm gonna trick her. <laughs> Which you're about, that's what you saw right there. Since I got her excited, I wanna be exciting. See, I'm gonna move backwards. I'm squatting down, I'm talking to her. I'm doing all the things and she doesn't get up. And then I call her over. She's like, I know all these tricks. So I got to get more creative because if you want your dog to improve, you have to find ways to challenge them. So all of this looks like fun uh, and it is fun, but I do it very sparingly and I do it for the purpose of making them more crisp in their listening skills. So the fun fast part is to keep them crisp in their listening skills uh, to make sure we keep it interesting, but it is not for the brain. It is arousal. I just want you guys to understand that. You don't want your dog to be like that all day long. So you gotta make sure you're practicing with your dog, slow, boring, calm, asking for less, helping them problem solve more. Okay, I'm gonna move on. This is another fun one. I was trying to get her to place at a distance while I'm in motion backwards. See that? So I, I gave her a hand gesture because this is a little bit new and different where, and it's faster pace, where I throw her over to place as, see, she wants to follow my body language rather than listen to place. So just little things that you can find. You can do a down while walking. You stay in motion, walking next to your dog and say down. Like all these little things you can challenge your dog to do. And I finally found something to challenge her. Okay, so we've had quite a bit of fun. Now I need to slow her brain back down again. I need to help her not be so focused on me and engaged with me and looking for the next command, the next right thing to do, okay? So I'm going back to the same thing you saw me do earlier is just really slowing her back down. Anytime you have fun with your dog, first of all, you shouldn't do it till they're passed out. But if you, if you go nice and slow with them, and calm them back down after you've got them excited. 
your dog will have less anxiety. There, I'm pulling another trick. You saw me just, first I walked by the ball and then I just rolled it on the ground to see if she went towards it. She's such a pro. Now we'll do it again, see if she goes towards it. Oh, such a pro. But anyway, you always want to slow the brain back down. If your dog comes in from a walk, like my little dog does this, she's excited to be back. I have to calm her back down before I even take her leash off and then make sure she's not staring at me like crazy. Like, what are we doing next? I have to really help her chill out before I go do my thing. Otherwise, I leave the brain in forward motion, in follower mode. Now, not every dog, you have to be crazy diligent about that. But if, if you see excitement, it's up to you to calm it down. If your dog just runs around with this general loading excitement, thinking you're going to do something or give them some information, you're going to have anxiety issues or just ex serious excitement issues. Resiliency and confidence building exercises is what you're seeing here. I want you to think over, under, through. Things that your dog can go over um, or climb on top of can go under, and through like tunnel, you know, like a, a tunnel that you woo, that you get on uh, Amazon, you know, for, for like agility, stuff like that. We even use, a, you know, the table right there. You can see dogs can go through that. And uh, at first I rewarded her just for putting her paws up, you know, and then a couple times later she was jumping up because she's a champ. She's good at this stuff, but it doesn't matter. This is still hard. Now, I didn't like, see how close I placed that to the brick? No, 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 we, we had to move it. So there's a safety thing. <laughs> so I'm pointing and guiding with the leash. Woo, look at that hop. And I preferably don't want her to get off until I say so. Now, if she's a bit panicky her first few times, she jumps right off, that's okay. But then I'm gonna try to go nice and calm nice and slow, use leash pressure to help them settle and not just leap off because they're a bit nervous. Um, honestly, sits like this are so valuable for dogs, long sits, like three minutes, five minutes. If you have a dog that's high strung, um, anxious, or you're just out of challenges because sit duration is crazy hard. And I don't want her to just leap off the side. <laughs> she doesn't listen to me. I was trying to get her to use the step. Anyway, we did this about 10 times before moving on. Now I needed food for this one. I don't use food on that other stuff. She just likes to do it. But this one, she needed food. So I rewarded her for going partially underneath. She likes to always feel in control. So I found going under things or through things was much tougher for her. I even tried leash pressure too. And I think I do a combo of food and leash here in a minute, but I'm heavy luring to just build her confidence. See how she backed out? I love seeing stuff like that because I'm like, yes, how do we overcome this? This is gonna be such great bonding for the two of us. We're gonna build more trust. I'm gonna show her she can do it. It's so great. But see how jittery she is? The difference really was I added the leash to the food right there on that one. But I had tried, I don't think I showed it, but I had tried just leash guidance before and she, she kind of bucked back at it. And I was like, okay, let's try food. And then it was food leash combo. Did the trick right there, food leash combo. <laughs> and you wanna go from multiple angles if you've got like something like this, because just cause she does it one way doesn't mean she'll do it the other way. But anyway, we did this a lot. See, she, she ducked out again without me holding the leash. That's the goal. I wanna build up to her doing this without the leash prompt. But anyway, I'm going to move on. But you guys got to know that we really did this quite a bit because it was challenging for her. Nice. See how I don't force? I didn't want her to flee. So I did hold some leash pressure so she didn't flee when she was trying to bounce around. But I didn't try to force her through. It's just guidance. I'm not pulling. It's just I'm holding tension on the leash in the direction I want her to go. This is the different direction, so I thought I'd stay with it for a minute. Combo. See, I'm just holding her so she can't flee. And she scooted under. Very good. So she even jumped a bit when I did that. Like she's this made her a little on edge and there's nothing even around. It's just so new. 
And then, of course, you know I finished it off with some slow patterning. And see that move into her where she, like, just stayed behind because we're in a small space? Well, I just used a little extra leash guidance to pull her forward. You can rewind that if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Because sometimes in a small space, the dogs just won't move with you. They're like, I'm already here. You can just use leash guidance for that. Now, I felt like she was pushing me forward right there. Um, or pushing forward in front of me. So we do it again, and I show you the leg. Boom. This only works preventatively, and she seemed to not care about it at all. She's like, why are you doing that? <laughs> so it wasn't super valuable. Turning into her is more valuable. She, she did not back up at my leg at all. Needs a little better spatial awareness, maybe, which just comes with spatial pressure work. I'm doing the same thing. I'm not going to say place if she keeps staring at it. I might just turn. Yeah, I'm just going to turn and go because she's waiting for me to give the place command. And then when I do give it, I'm not going to give it when she's looking at it and expecting it. And just a reminder on my pauses on this particular exercise, on the slow exercise, on the pauses, I do not say sit her down. I stopped right here to make her uncomfortable. Look at her frozen stance. Isn't that funny? It's almost like I paused it. I swear I did it. But it took her a minute to relax because she was so confused in that tight space. Now she's sniffing. She's doing that redirecting with her sniffing. I did tap eventually um, when I realized what she was doing. Because I need her to just stand there and be bored next to me. Not to be sniffing everywhere. If she wants to sniff a little, like I said before, a little sniff right below her, no big deal. But she takes it excessively. Okay, so just to be clear, this sit, if she lays down or sits, that's fine. But she, she did it. Um, but I'm not going to tell her to. I tapped for that as well. She's just trying to distract herself. She has to be constantly entertained. I'm trying to work on her being bored. And if your dog does sit or lay down and you were about to move and say, let's go, start your, you know, 30 seconds all over again. Just, just really wait the dog out. Let them settle into those stationary commands. <laughs> 